Hey guys, welcome back to Just Fixing Garage. I'm Justin. Behind me we have another Trailblazer. This is a 2006 uh, Trailblazer with the 4.2, you know, inline six cylinder. Uh, we're gonna be looking at the ball joints today. It's one we've worked on before, but when I looked at it recently, just for like a little checkup, I noticed a lot of play in one of the upper ball joints. Given that these are prone to failure and this has over 210,000 miles, closer to 220, it's definitely something we wanted to get addressed. So if you have a 2002 or 2007 Trailblazer and you need the upper ball joints, you know, follow along with this video. I'll show you every tool that I needed to use, uh, as well as, you know, a step-by-step -step guide to do that. You shouldn't really need an alignment after this, but you know, it never hurts to get it. Uh, on top of that, I do want to note that you're going to need some specialty tools, which you can get from AutoZone or Advance. I use Advance for a master ball joint set, which I'll give you the part number and such in the description and talk about in the video. But, uh, you know, cheap job. You can do an hour per side and uh, let's get into it so you know how to do it. All right, guys. So here is the passenger side wheel. And I want to show you how generally you'll test for ball joints and tie rod play and hub is generally put your hand on the top and the bottom and you wiggle back and forth and then you do the same thing left and right. Left and right is going to be hard to really test when one wheel is, when both wheels are off the ground. But I mean, if you want to see this ball joint, it's very easy to see. Look at all that play. This is not something I want a mom or her kids driving in. A little, a little too much play. You could have plenty of life left, but given all the rust around it, what's probably happening is the ball inside the socket is slowly rubbing away. Eventually it's gonna cause it to pull all the way through. When that happens, this entire wheel will be able to dismount and fold, fold this way. I actually had a trailblazer get towed in with this exact same issue, which is why I really took special attention to this. And I did upper, lower, ball joints, tie rod and sway bar links. Didn't film it because I, I didn't have time, but figured I'd film it on this, especially since you know now I know how to do it. So I'm gonna get into it and show you how to do it. Oh, and if you want to see, if you want to see what one is supposed to act like, and you can see this one looks a little cleaner, no play, nothing. I get nothing out of it. So this ball joint's fine. Generally, I would replace them in pairs, but I don't know if this one's been done before or what, but it just doesn't have any play to me, and I don't want to cost her another $100 to change out a ball joint. So if this one's all right, we're going to leave it. If she decides she wants to keep it longer, I might suggest we do a bunch more ball joints and get everything done. But for now, let's go to the passenger side. Right, guys first step obviously get the car up in the air let's get the wheel off uh, for this side i think they're 17 or 19 millimeter the way i'm going to do this is to try to do this while it's still on the car without removing everything so when i say everything i mean the bottom ball joint the cbx i don't want to take that off so what i'll start with is taking off the caliper from the caliper bracket it's two 13 millimeter bolts you can get them out from the back so i'm going to get that up hang my caliper out of the way then i'll be taking off the caliper bracket i'll tell you what size when i get to it and pull the rotor off and I'm also going to unbolt my um, this harness for the brake lines and likely unclip my uh, ABS sensor as well I mean I'll show you all that and follow up because I want to be able to take this thing and pull it as close to the front as I can on the last one I did I was able to do the upper ball joint by just pulling this forward and being really careful against the edge so let me get this the rest of the way off I'll go over what bolts but essentially just get your brakes out of the way as far as your caliper and your caliper bracket and then we can work from there. Hey guys, I'm gonna take back what I said about taking off the rotor and everything. I just realized I really don't need to do that. Getting the caliper off will be enough so I can get that out of my way. I do still need to unbolt it from here. So caliper can come off. You can pull your pads out if you want. I am not going to, I'm gonna probably pull mine out just so they don't fall, but um, you won't need to take off the rotor and stuff. Right? I just realized there's really no point to do that. So that being said, I'm going to Take my bolts out here. I think they're two 10 millimeters that will get this hose freed up so that this caliper can sit over here and be out of the way. And then uh, I'll go through and kind of free up my ABS sensor some so that I got slack. Then we'll unbolt this ball joint, which again, you can see that's not safe. Then we'll try to get that pressed out. So wheel off, 13 millimeter, get the caliper bracket off, 10 millimeters, get these two out. 
Hopefully it'll come out. Everything's pretty rusty on here. I was gonna take this cab rag off, but it's being really a pain. So I'm gonna leave it for now. There's plenty of meat on the pads. The rotors are fine, so let's keep going. caliper off. I've unbolted this bracket here which was two 10 millimeters. This is just so that the line is free. Uh, the only thing really left tight is our ABS sensor which um, I unclipped from here, unclipped from here. With a flathead screwdriver I pried that open. Now I need to separate it from this bracket itself or I'll need to move the caliper over. What you don't want is you don't want this to be getting too tight. It'll cause the ABS sensor to stop working. So I'm going to separate it from the bracket, move it to my side which will give me slack to pull this out. And the next step will be just unbolting this. I'll tell you the sizes. So, so far I've only taken the wheel off, used a 13 millimeter, used a 10 millimeter, used a flathead, and it's going pretty smoothly. I'm kind of taking my time to make sure it's all done good, but I'll keep going into it. Lock in that caliper can sit in here. I'll get a hook for it. Don't want it falling. There go. That'll keep me from letting it fall. All right. Next up, let's get this off. Let's find out what size it is. Get that off. And ideally, this will slide out for us. So I'm going to keep going. Hopefully, you can somewhat see what I'm doing, and I'll tell you the sizing. Okay, it looks like it's going to be 15 millimeter for both of those, for both sides of this. Hi, guys. So, I'm going to get the top ball joint out. There's a bolt, there's a nut and a bolt. Looks like both sides from the factory are 15 millimeter. You're going to need like a wrench or a deep socket on one side, something else on the other. Hopefully yours comes out nice and easy. Yep. Not too bad. Let's see how good it comes out of the actual knuckle. And your new uh, ball joint should come with a new, um, new bolt. So you shouldn't have to worry about getting that replaced at all. Or reusing the old one. Okay. Bolt is out. You just gotta separate this now to get it to come out. I think mine's gonna come out just fine. It's not really giving me much of a problem. If it does, you can try tapping up. arm out of your way. She wants to come. There's nothing stopping me now. Let me try getting the air hammer. Scared me there for a second. All right, so that's out. Like I said, last time I worked on this, they would pull it out just enough here to get my tool on there. You hear that? You see all that? This is a failed ball joint. Ooh, check that out. Look at how worn down that is in there. I'll have to get a picture of this ball joint. That's bad. Can't have her driving on that. All right, so see if I can start getting the tool in here. Press this out. First thing I need to do is get this factory snap ring out, which 
uh, it looks like it's not even really held in anymore. Look, look at that. Just take a flat head and pop it off. Again, new one comes with a new one. You don't need to reuse this stuff. You wouldn't want to anyway. And I probably should be covering my eyes here. Oh, it's gone. Okay, so with these ones, we're gonna to need to be pushing this way down. I may have to even cut this ball joint part off so that I can push it down. I'm gonna get my tools and take a look. It might come out easy, it might not. We're gonna find out. All right guys, let's talk about the tool set we're gonna use here. Don't mind all the mess. So I've got Power Built Kit 44, model number 648. Is that 67, 617? Essentially it is like a master ball joint set. I like to rent this when I can. I should buy it, but it's almost 300 bucks. It's not worth it, but it's gonna have all the tools I'm gonna need to push this out. So uh, that being said, I'm gonna try to find something that I can get to push this ball joint out and uh, see if I can work with that. I think ideally I'm gonna have to cut it first to get it out because I wanna push on the ball itself, but that's gonna be problematic. So I might not get this out in one piece, sadly. But I'm going to give it a couple smacks with a hammer first, and then I'll, I'll bring the press in. But chances are, like I said, I'll be grinding this flat and getting it out. I know this may sound crazy, but I'm thinking mine is so loose, I might be able to just pull it out without having to cut it. It's not the first time I've seen that. There's my hammer at, my trusty, dusty hammer. Look at that. So my this ball joint was so bad, I was able to take vice grips and literally pull it out of here. Which means that going down the road, this could have hit enough bumps to pull this out. So if you can't do this with yours, because yours isn't that bad, you're just gonna need to cut this so that you can push down on the inside. I'm gonna show you how we do that in a minute. Um, but yeah, that is, and look at that right there. That is it worn down to almost nothing. So let me show you how I'm gonna get this pressed out. All right guys, so the objective of this, when you're pushing down, is to have a large cup on the bottom that you're gonna push into, and then you're going to use this to push down. Now for me, I'm gonna actually take my bolt and have it go right into the ball joint to push it out, because there's no reason I can't do that. I'll show you that all lined up before I push it out. And again, I told you guys, you should be able to pull this out just enough to work in here. So you don't gotta take nothing else off. See, it just barely leans out. a big boy. 15, 16 is a little big. So it looks like 7 eighths. So let me show you our setup here. So got a large cup on the bottom. I'm able to put my bolt all the way through there. And I want to call out, you know, you want to be careful here. These scratches were already there. This thing's, you know, seen its turf. But you want to be careful if you want. You can throw a rag down here. But you're able to pull this out just enough to get this tool in here. Again, you can try taking off every single last thing. If you're doing lower ball joints too, sure, go ahead and take more off. But uh, for this, that's all we're gonna do. I'm gonna get my impact and add it and put it on here and tighten that up. And it should push this ball joint straight through. And when it does, we'll clean it up and we'll go grab my other uh, new ball joint.
getting ready to fall through, so I'm going to hold it so it doesn't hit the car. All right. And there we are. Old one is out. All right, so I don't know where all the pieces went. Let's take a look at this. So we've got a nice bore in here. You may want to go through if yours is bad and clean it up, but otherwise that looks pretty good. Nothing's, nothing's damaged. And again, I haven't taken anything really major off. Nothing is getting overextended here. Everything's okay. Our ABS sensor has plenty of room. Our brake is out of the way and we're able to do this without taking anything else off. So if I'm not filming, I'm thinking I'm in here 20, 20, 20, 20 minutes, 45 minutes if this goes smoothly. Obviously filming takes a little longer, but I mean, guys, if you're doing this yourself, I know the ball joint job's very expensive in shop, but you can have this done in, let's say two hours if you're not very experienced and 50 bucks for a part, 100, 100 total. So let me go get the new ball joint. I'll show you how I have a trick to get these in easier that probably everybody uses. So something I didn't tell you to do, which, you know, if you're watching this video, you probably have time, is you wanna have your ball joint on hand at least a day ahead of time, and you wanna put it in the freezer. This is actually a piece to uh, another ball joint I had in there freezing up. And some hamburger from probably a year ago. But put the ball joint in the freezer. And you do that because you want it to shrink as much as you can in order to let it go in easier. You know, you're going to use a press, but hey, if it goes in there with less effort, even better, you know, because you're going to want to put it in there straight. So I'm going to get this ball joint ready. I'm going to set it in there. Came with a new bolt. For instance, this is part FA6664. Look, if you want to get cheap stuff on Amazon, go for it. Uh, I was actually looking at a full set for uh, a guy I did everything on. It was 250 bucks for everything, which is cheaper than the 800 we paid or so, or six, six, seven, six, seven, eight hundred. It was a lot, but there was reviews of them breaking after like months of driving. And to me, I feel like yeah, Duralast isn't the best, but uh, I don't think they're going to put their name on something that's going to snap in half in a month. Will it wear out? Possibly. But let's get this ready, lubed up, and uh, installed. And I'll show you how we get this cup all set up to install it. All right, so we got a new ball joint. Take a look at everything. I guess I should have checked to make sure it was actually in here. We've got a new snap ring, a new ball joint, and we should be ready to go. So, installation on these bad boys. So we've got this. Uh, we know we just pushed the other one out, which means we have to push this one in. So you always wanna look at the side you wanna push on and try to find something that is going to closely mate up to this. So I'm gonna look through my set here. And personally, I think this one is going to fit it the best. There might be other ones, but we're going to try to use that. I'm also going to put a little bit of grease on it to make it easier to go in. We'll just lather some grease in there. Let's hope that it makes this job a little easier. Okay. Something you want to take note of is uh, sometimes when they put this little groove on there, it, it means that's where grease will shoot out of first. Don't know if that's the case for these, but if you do that, you want to have it pointing away from your brakes. So for us, we'll have it facing uh, towards the inside. Get this somewhat straight in there. Get this cup on there. And then what you need for the top is a cup that will let you drive this thing home. Take a quick look. I've got a large cup up top, something that's closely meeting it. I'm gonna see that. If that slips, I'll do something else. I'm gonna start tightening this. Sometimes you tighten it and you gotta kind of look at it, hit the top with a hammer to get it level. How do you do that before? This is still cold, so let's see if I can get that in there.
right, so hopefully you got to see that, you know, that turned the impact, the compressor cuff coming on. But if you see, we have a seated ball joint in there now. So next what I need to do is get the snap ring in. If you don't have snap ring pliers, you know, maybe pick up a set, or you can probably do this with like needle nose or something. Um, but all in all, that's looking really good. It's seated in there just fine. Again, we were able to do this just with enough clearance up there. It is tight, but hey, if you're trying to save time, um, and you're doing this like, you know, for a neighbor and you want it to be inexpensive for them. I mean, that's the way to do it. If, uh, if I had to do the bottom ball joints like I did before, I'd pull the whole thing off, but you're talking a lot more parts, axle nut. And you know, the more you take off, the more you risk of things breaking. And I don't want to go to my neighbor and, you know, have them having to buy parts because I want to do it the long way. So that looks good. Let's get the snap ring, which came in our bag here. And I gotta say, I bet that went in there easily because of the of freezing it. So snap rings in there. Let's see if I got my snap ring pliers. And you guys are gonna laugh how unorganized I am here. Oh, huh, whatever. All right. So I have my pliers set up. When you squeeze, they open. You can flip them around the other way if you want. But I don't have anybody to help me hold. So let's see if I can do this one-handed. Don't want to take up too much more time because I want to have dinner with the family tonight. But um, my neighbor, and she probably wouldn't care if I mentioned who she was. Um, she does a lot of the Amazon Flex stuff. She uses this vehicle. And, uh, you know, when I saw it, I just, you know, I, I try to be honest with people. Tell them when I think something is messed up. It's their call whether we replace it. Uh, she generally trusts my judgment uh, because, one, I'm... I can go without the work, right? I don't, this isn't my living. This is just helping out friends and family. I'm going to set this down so you guys can just kind of watch. Um, I'm talking to the camera. I, I like it. Everybody talks to cameras, right? Uh, let's see. Can you see what we're doing? Yeah. So um, she probably won't care if I mention it, but she has the flex thing. And I, I try to be honest with them when I suggest work because I don't need the money, right? I'm not desperate for it. I usually don't even charge them much if, you know, if anything, you know, you know, this one's being a little tough. Make sure it's not beveled. But, um, you know, so if I suggest something, it generally means, hey, you really should do this. And she did. She listened. She uh, was okay with me doing it pretty much right away. Um, this is a couple days after I diagnosed it. I'm having that problem. There we go. <laughs> but I made some silly faces there. All right, snap ring is seated in there. That's good. I'm gonna make sure it gets a good seat all the way around. Chances are it would never hit up against this. It's always gonna stay tight. This is your, your safety ring here, if anything. The old one was rusted out and would have probably flew if enough pressure did it. But that is one nice tight ball joint there now. We also need to put our grease fitting in. I could have done that ahead of time, but I suggest you save the grease fitting for um, after it's in there. This one's, they're pretty smart now. They give you ones with 90 degree fittings so you can angle it wherever it needs to go. So in our case, I'm gonna get it started and I'm gonna angle it left or right. I don't really care which, but I might not even show this in the filming. There we go. I probably have to get some pliers and snug that up or a wrench, but we'll get that. I'm gonna get that done. Uh, and then after that's done, we're ready to start putting it back together. So the hardest part's out of the way, guys. You've got the new ball joint in took, I think I'm all of an hour into this job, and that's with stopping and filming. I'm telling you, this takes forever, guys. So hopefully you appreciate it. All right. All right, ball joint's in, the snap ring is in, and it's seated all the way. I'm gonna pop this bad boy back into its control arm. Shit. There we go. All right. So, you might run into a problem where this doesn't wanna line up anymore, so you may have to force it. ball joint's a lot tighter, so it doesn't want to do what you tell it. Get it started. Tap it down. 
Make sure you don't damage your boot. That is more important than anything. Back in here a couple months, doing it again. Okay. That's good. So, we've got a new bolt and a new nut. Let's get that on there. I'll look up torque specs in a minute. I think it was like 20 something when I did this last. And remember, the way this was facing, the bolt went towards the passenger side, or the rear of the car, and the nut was on this side. Does it matter? I don't know. Do not know, do not care. I will do it the way it was when it came off. Looks like the new size is different than the old one. Ball joint to steering knuckle. It says 30 foot pounds. So I don't know if you can see that, but ball joint to steering knuckle. Upper is 30 foot pounds, lower is 81. So I'm pretty sure it's already that tight and I didn't really ugga dug and nothing. So let's just make sure we're torqued to spec because the internet loves torquing to spec and so do I, because nobody can complain that I half assed it. So got my snap on torque wrench, 30 foot pounds. Let's wait for the click. Yeah, 30 foot pounds is like nothing. So we're nice and strong. We're not over torqued, that's good. Okay, so 30 foot pounds, we got that all torqued. Now we can start putting everything back together that was left. That includes our brake caliber, our ABS sensor, and putting that, that bracket back on. So I'm just gonna do it. I'm not really gonna, I'll show you when I'm done. But we're gonna do all that, and then we're not gonna forget we're gonna grease that ball jump before we're done. I got two more things left. One's greased the ball joint and the other one's put the tire back on. Got my caliber back on. I did compress it a little bit so that it would go on easier. I'm going to do 13 millimeter bolts back in there. I tightened them up. I routed my ABS sensor back into all of its holders. I put it back up here and closed that clip. Put it there. Clipped it back into my bracket here, even though it doesn't want to stay. <laughs> put my two 10 millimeters back there. So everything is back to where it was when we started. The only thing left is I want to grease that ball joint which if you don't have a grease tool, you should have picked one up for this because you don't want to run these dry and put the wheel back on. So all in all, not too bad. Let me get my grease gun, shoot some grease in that until we start to see the, the swell a little bit. Right now it's completely bone dry or they say it's grease from the factory, but it's not. And then I'll put the wheel back on and we'll finish up and do a quick shake test, see how it feels. All right guys, so that's a, a good job we did on this. You can see we've got a new ball joint in there. It's all greased up, good to go. We don't have that play anymore that we did. There is some slight slop in the actual bushing, but you know, that is for another day if we wanna do that. That's not to me as much of a safety issue as this ball joint failing. I mean, if we're looking at this thing, how it sat in there. One, it was completely you know, worn out here. And the cup itself, again, I pulled this out with a pair of pliers from the cup. That should not be possible because that means that while this was bouncing, if it would have hit a good enough bump, it would have just popped right out of it and this wheel would have came flying towards us. And again, you know, uh, this is my neighbor's vehicle, so, you know, she has her kids, they go to football games and such. So the last thing you want to do is, is have that happen. Again, I'd replace the other side if it had any play at all, but literally it's clean. You know, we've got some slight play in this bushing over here. But the bolt is still solid. And again, I'm not trying to throw, you know, we, don't, we don't want to throw a lot of money into this vehicle. We just want to be safe. So I'm happy with this. Hopefully it helped you guys. And if it did, be sure to like, subscribe, share the video. Um, process is the same on the other side, lower ball joints. I wish I filmed that on the other vehicle, but fortunately I didn't. So anyway, guys, thanks again and have a great day.